la 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 Ma, ma. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Film Me In podcast. My name's Hamish Beaton, and this is the podcast where we film you in about everything wonderful and brilliant in the world of cinema. I'm joined today by my three fantastic co-hosts. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Xander? I'm Xander, and I'm hooked on a feeling. Bam, 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 bam. I'm high on believing. Bam, 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 bam. That we just watched a crap movie. Ooh, okay. Oh. Ooh. Maybe he's actually. Maybe he actually doesn't like this. I'm a feeling. Like. Okay, there's there, there's words there. Uh, for anyone listening at home, that is what we are tuning into this week. We are going to be watching. Well, we've already watched actually. Guardians of the Galaxy three. James Gunn's big Marvel send off, or so we thought, possibly. Um, coming up next, who is to my left on the screen? Hello, it's Joe. This, this intro is way too <laughs> optimistic. Hamish, was, hell, we're too happy hell, right now. We should have been. Hello, uh, but I'm, Joe. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I'm so very happy. And just below Joe? It's a C1. Again. It's a C1. Boo. No. <laughs> awesome stuff. So before we get into this week's big topic, we have our regularly scheduled moaning session. Oh, um, who wouldn't like to lead with a good old moan? Oh my god, we've got a queue of moans this week. <laughs> me, me, so, me, 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 so me, one, me. So one, so one, beat you to it. Um, my moan, because I wanted to go first, is the coronation. Oh, just done it. Because it's full of shit. So yeah. I wanted to put that in there. My mind's the coronation. Um, That's valid. I, personally, I don't give a shit. Do what you want. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I, well, I'm like the only properly British one here. Like, English, sorry. What's Joe? Oh, my. Joe's English. English. Joe's from who? Like, come on. He's <laughs> Joe, Joe is from the South. That is correct. Um, <laughs> Joe, what's your moan? My moan... It is sort of coming off from this, but Paddington has let me down. Um, oh, the Paddington what? Twitter account tweeted out today. Remember to be kind and polite today. Shut up! You are a Twitter account. You don't. They, that doesn't represent Paddington anymore. That is not Paddington. I saw, wait, I saw someone tweet replying saying, "Shut up, you marmalade." Yes, that, <laughs> that is my feelings towards it. <laughs> oh my god! I never expected those words out your mouth. Really? One of the words. Wow, the, the bleep are getting Marmalade? let out early this week. Um, <laughs> Marmalade. Oh. You know, I've Sorry. been let oh, down man. by Paddington. That's my moan. Oh, man. Xander, do you want to go or should I? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Um, my moan is surrounding cinema times and getting to the cinema on time. So, listen, I'm very much of the mind of like, if a movie starts at like three o'clock... I want to be there at 3 o'clock, even mm -hmm. though I know the adverts start at 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. and the movie doesn't actually start till like 20 past. I like to be sat, and I like to be comfortable, and I just, um, it winds me up when, when I go with people, um, not, not naming any names, all of my friends, and they Name just names. don't respect that. They sort of like toss about and refuse to walk into the cinema until it's like, the movie's about to start. Like, the BBFC Whoa. card will be up. And I'm like, no, I do not like this at all. So, but the trailer my moan, and adverts are part of it. It's part yeah. of the experience. It's just like, for me, for me personally, it's just a matter of, I like to be sat, I like to be relaxed, I don't want to be stressing getting into the cinema. Because I'm about to sit there for two hours. Like, I want to be comfortable, and comfortable in myself. Get, mm. get my mind yeah. in the right place. So, like, Man, yeah. Just, just come with us. Yeah, just I should, I should just... Trek we are like punctual. halfway across the country. We're and early. We're always there. When it's dark. Just, just move to yeah. us. We'll like, yeah. get, we'll put you up on the sofa and just like, it'll be great. We'll take yeah. care of you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Exactly. We love so yeah, that, that's my um, moan. Uh, Hamish, hit me. My, my moan was gonna be the coronation, but then Sawan <laughs> came out with it and effectively Sorry. said what I wanted to say, and then Joe's like sprinkled in on it. So my <laughs> moan. <laughs> No, because I have statistics I can add to that. Ooh, go for um, it. Okay, right. Have you so, printed something I, off? No, um, <laughs> I put this on my Instagram story. 
Um, a reminder to everyone that the guy who is single-handedly worth more than eight hundred million pound is still having us pay for his celebration today. The UK is on an all-time low, and the coronation is to be paid for by the British government. Excellent. So the British public, you mean? Uh, to let you all know as well, that is upwards of ten million pound from the taxpayer. Uh, we have reports as well that he quote unquote voluntarily pays tax. Congratulations, you are doing the bare fucking minimum. Um, you also hung out with a nonce. He was base mate. He was best mates with a nonce for a bit. And to top it all off, his brother's um, a nonce. The Tory his, council. His brother's a nonce. That too. No, um, no, Charles, don't do it. Your uh, brother, he's a nonce. <laughs> don't do it, Charles. <laughs> he took his kids, Charles. Down! To, to what, round it all off, our quote-unquote democratically elected uh, council seats, the Tory council of Brumley vetoed £50,000 to go to food banks and instead spent it on the coronation. Um, wow. Sorry, allegedly a, a paedophile. I'm ta- I was talking about Jimmy Savile. Um, oh, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, no, he's... <laughs> he's oh, yeah, good, good, good confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I have the receipts for that one. I, w- I will say, I quickly tuned in to the coronation. Boo. No, because uh, I don't care about it. I hate the monarchy, but I thought, it's a moment in history. I'll take a look. And it was shot of the people in there. I mean, for one, I saw Ant and Deck in the audience, so that made me angry. Um, but also, I, I just looked at them, and I wondered... How many of these people, how many of the people in the audience are actually paedophiles? Because a lot of them looked pretty shifty. <laughs> um, they had the secret sex lips, you know, so. Secret sex lips. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. On to the main topic of today's show. We have our spoiler free zone coming up. First of all, everyone's thoughts and opinions on the movie. Very it's good. dog shit! It's dog shit! I'm no, going it's, it's dog not. shit! It's dog shit! Oh. It's total dog shit! This is one of the worst Marvel movies ever made. Hundred percent. What? I, I, I'm, we I'm thought shocked. you were joking. No, I'm being hundred percent serious. This is oh. this movie is so bad. This Psych? movie is like oh. such bad ass. It's it's oh. so boring and long. It's overly long. It wastes all of the characters. It made me hate so many of the characters I already loved. I was already invested in these characters. And this is like, this has just taken a massive dump on all of them. Um, I'm disgusted that Marvel let James Gunn do this. And I'm terrified for the future of DC going forward. Oh my god! Is what I would say is if this was a bad movie, but it was actually kind of good. Oh, Oh, fuck you! It's actually a really good movie. It's actually a really good movie. I I was going to say, what's your rating out of 10? (laughs) All week! I led you guys on the ropes all week. Oh. I was gonna say, I was like, can you please like give me a rating out of ten? Like, I hate you so much. You should be cancelled for that. <coughs> I'm gonna boycott the fucking <coughs> podcast. Oh, yeah. oh my you know what? God. No, um, pretty good, pretty damned good <laughs> movie. I, um, IGN, I do believe, gave it ten out of ten, which is a rare one from IGN. I, I, IGN. My, my I, I was told someone earlier and. They said that it, someone's been calling it like the best Marvel movie ever, and I was like, mm. if someone said that to me, I wouldn't like be angry at them. I wouldn't be like, well, you're wrong. I'd be like, okay, that's interesting, because it's I... it's got a lot of really good stuff in this, um, and yeah, it made me feel a lot of emotions. I um, yeah, uh, did you uh, cry? That's uh, the big question because we I'm, fucking bawled our Joe eyes out. Joe cried. I cried. I never cry in front of people, but I cried three times watching that film. We Listen, all know what I, three um, scenes we cried at as well. We all know. <laughs> as as I mentioned, like you know, sort of jokingly earlier, like, I'm already invested in these characters, so it was always going to be like an easy sell. It's like look, coming back to a family, and I think as soon as the holiday special was good, I think I was like, well, okay, this is probably going to be good as well. Because I'm not, I'm not big time. on the holiday. I'm not big on the holiday special. I mean, I've I'm seen really it the once. Not. It's fun. It's fun, harmless, but it's like actually kind of funny. And it's like, okay, so if this is funny, then you know this is probably going to be quite good. And I've I trust James Gunn. He's not made a bad movie yet. No, he hasn't. Um, that is and he's very you know 
he's clearly about to be head of DC for a reason. Like, you know, I I trust this guy. So this was never going to be a hard sell for me, but like he, I, he did make another good move. I have been saying that it must suck to suck beating Marvel right now, having treated James Gunn like dog shit. Yeah. And then he got up, did a movie for DC. DC went, oh, shit, okay. Game recognizes game. And then gave him the gave him the job at the top, and he's now just bye, <laughs> see ya. Yeah, that seems like so long ago. Everything from twenty twenty, but yeah, Marvel fumbled the bag completely. Yeah, and it, I, I dare I say, I want to give it a ten out of ten. Like what? What you said, Xander, being like people saying it's the best Marvel movie. The issue is with Marvel is that they're a hybridized genre of films. Every movie is a hybridization. Joe's having a stroke because he wrote Jeff. his dissertation. Oh, let's make it. Um, <laughs> I think that's the third week in a row we've mentioned that word as well. Make it stop, please. What? I, 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 if, if, if my memory was working any better right now, I'd start giving you references. Of the, theorists who came up with hybridization, <laughs> genre hybridization theory. I think it's Stuart, Stuart Butler? I can't remember. But, um, or Richard Dyer. One of the two. Um, sure Hall! Mate. Sure Hall! My god. GCSE coming back to me. Um, but yeah, you've got like Winter Soldier, which is like a spy thriller. And then you can't really compare that to Guardians, in a way. That's sort of like a fair playing field. Unless, of course, you go back and listen to our old podcasts that are been out for a few weeks now which are, are uh, which are our MCU tournament go listen to them we do that comparison yeah. shameless plug um, <laughs> I I want to give this a 10 out of 10 I I think I, I put on letterbox that it was a 9 out of 10 I have nitpicks of it um, like some character stuff and some moments uh, but like as a whole and as an experience, it's it's a nine out of ten for me. Agreed. I I gave it a nine. Not that I'd... it's I don't know why I don't give it a ten because I don't remember anything bad about it. But I don't know. Gut feeling is nine. But I don't like if someone says it's a ten, I'm not gonna like disagree. Like <laughs> Sander said, if someone says it's the best one, I have no reason for it not to be. I, th- I think it's yeah. bloody good. I think that's yeah. the thing. This this is one of the best Marvel films, and it, this is probably one one of the best. Would you, is this the best end to a trilogy that Marvel has done? Ooh. I would. Ooh. I'd say it's pretty solid. Like what? Are the, what yeah. Quantumania, no. I, no. Uh, Civil I, War. I, I'd say this is better than Civil War. Yes. Yeah, oh, easily. Yeah. Iron Man. Yeah, it's about that. Well, I think three. I think the thing that helps this trilogy the most is that it's so disconnected. Because like, you look mm. at Iron Man, Iron Man one, two, and three. You can't watch Iron Man three without understanding what happened in the Avengers. Yeah. In Captain America, the, in the Captain America trilogy, you can't see Civil War without understanding like a load of new characters that get introduced. I'm gonna in this, pop this balloon. In in this uh, I know I know you have to <laughs> I know you have to see Infinity War and Endgame, but it really helps that those were like the biggest movies of all time, so um, everyone saw them. Even like people who don't like Marvel movies went and saw Avengers three and four. I think another thing with that is that I read something recently through James Gunn where he he was saying how the the stuff that happened at the end of Endgame kind of screwed him over. He was like, "What the hell do I do now?" Yeah. Um, which I think is some of the weaker bits about the film, but we'll get onto that later. Yeah, um, I think as well was um wasn't Guardians three meant to come out before Fall Love and Thunder as well? Guardians was... three was meant to have come out last year and it kept getting delayed and everyone was holding their breath about it. Yeah, I I want to say, but by the way, Marvel, I'm willing, I'm happy to say all is for. All is forgiven for Phase 4. All is forgiven. Because it has been a dumpster fire with hints of, like, beauty. But this has been peak. This is a Marvel! We can't, be bl- we can't be thanking Marvel for making this movie. This, this is was James, James Gunn. Gunn. This is James Gunn, alright? You cannot be saying, 
thank Marvel for doing this because Marvel had nothing to do with this. They let, just let James Gunn do what he wanted. That's very all, true. The only thing was like, do, do something for Disney Plus, please. And he he smashed this out of the park. Like this is this is his trilogy, his own thing. And like even like two is, I think two is sort of like, I think two is underrated. And and this is this is formed probably the best comic book trilogy of all time now. It's got to solidify Ima- it. Imagine good comic book movies being written and made by comic book fans compared to comic book movies that aren't made by comic book fans that don't like burn. I, th- I think. Imagine. In, in terms of forgiving as well, the 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 stuff we have problems with, like um, you know the over reliance and humor and bad cgi that's not present in this the cgi is good and the humor is good and it's not too much the cg is beautiful mm. like com- I-, I watched someone compare shots of it to wakanda forever <laughs> and it's laughable it's a joke it is it is shocking like and they again use practical sets i know i know we we'll, we'll get to that we'll get to that because we don't want to spoil anything but like <laughs> yes you are Sorry for spoiling it. No, it, it's just like, how is it like? We know that James Gunn s- sources all his production groups because he works with a very tightly knit production team. Yeah, but like, oh my god! Like it is laughably different compared to like She Hulk or Wakanda Forever or anything that has been in the most recent like span of releases. It's what, almost what? as if, it's almost as if, right, hear me out here, that here James Gunn is a real filmmaker and just not just like a shell for Marvel Studios and Kemi Feige to direct things. It's almost mm. as if that they've they've given their trust in a actual competent movie director who well, knows how to make movies and loves that... movies. Yeah, that's and not just like a a TV director or a a really small indie filmmaker who made like one film and then got given two hundred million dollars to make Spider Man. Like cough, cough, Eternals. Yeah, Eternals. Like that's the biggest problem with that. She can work with actors so well, but she can't work with a two hundred million dollar budget and this vast story. She can't do it, and that's okay. Like that, that you, yeah. it's okay. Like I really want to see what Chloe Zhao does next because I hope that it's a smaller movie where she can you know hone in on the great performances she can get from actors but yeah like, i hope she I, well as well as that the script for that movie sucked ass <laughs> I, I i think <laughs> that's another thing though because another thing i read recently was that um it was someone who works for marvel was saying that although the films are directed by pe- certain people they're not the person behind the directing like they shouldn't get full credit if you know what i mean so say like something's written say take for instance doctor who it says the utu part is written by i think matt jones but russell t davies wrote most of that but it's uncredited the same goes for some of the directing in marvel how it's listed as someone but it's someone else who's done most of it but this yeah. feels like it was solely james gunn james yeah. james gunn movies style. yeah they're all it's all very stylized and it works. There's no other way about it. Yeah. Um, mm. so the man can direct a ask, movie. <laughs> damn right. What I will ask now is that everyone gives a... I know we don't like ratings, but to get everyone's kind of like feeling on it... Hooked on a feeling. Hooked on a feeling. High, high on believing. <laughs> Joe, what are you sitting at? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I am gonna give. I'll give. I give like a rating and then a brief summation of my thoughts. Um, a thought process. A thought process. Um, yeah, I'm giving it a nine out of ten. I had problems with certain bits, um, but it didn't ruin the overall experience. Um, it it was a great it's a great send off for these characters. You know, it feels like a proper family, and that we're sort of saying goodbye to them. Um, surprisingly violent. Um, yeah, which was which is very strange, but that was good. The humor was good, uh, CGI was great, um, pacing was great. It didn't feel like two and a half hours, um, and it 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 is nice to watch a good film again. Uh, so yeah, nine out of ten. 
Swam. A very high 9 out of 10. Um, yeah, I just very much liked it. I don't know. It's a high 9 out of 10. Xander. I will say also it's a pretty high 9, nine out of 10. Um... I'm, I'm the spawner of this don't like numbers, by the way, and I'm just straight up saying I'm not even going to dick about it. This is, like, really good. Um, yeah, and I, I was about to say, I instead think... of giving me a number, can you, like, give me some sort of, like, guttural noise? <laughs> I, I detected the excitement from that noise, Xander. I'm so glad that everyone else at home could as well. Um, I... <laughs> I I've said on record many many times that my biggest problem with guardians of the galaxy 2 is that it's not funny um and what's great about guardians 1 is that it is so funny still so the first one is a comedy movie the second one is like a family tragedy and this movie has both it has great emotional beats and really good jokes which is really great to hear because the second one, like, I watch it and I'm like, there's big laugh breaks. And I'm like, yeah, that's not funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think they've definitely got everything right here. And I love Drax in this movie. They made Drax into a joke in the last one. And in Infinity War and Endgame, like, he's barely used. And whenever he is, he's just like a joke. In this, you realise, oh, this is why we love this character. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, and... Rocket, rock, I mean, the movie is Rocket. It's Rocket's movie, and he rocks it. <laughs> oh. um, I love the villain. We, I've been talking with um, a friend of mine at work, and we've been saying how much we miss just, like, moustache-twirling baddies who are just bad, and they mm. do, like, the most heinous shit. And it's like, because I just... I, I'm bad. <laughs> I just like it. I just, I'm just bad. <laughs> no, that's wrong with me. I'm just bad, and th those are the best. So, like proper Disney villain, like Jafar or Scar. Why are you bad? I just am, mate. I just, I just really like it. And this is the exact same kind of level. I fucking love it. Um. So yeah, really good movie. I'm going seeing it again tomorrow, and I will be seeing it again with another friend of mine. Um. So I'm yeah, big big nine out of ten. Um, go check this out. Um, I want to say, I want to be in the same boat as you, Hamish, where I'm like, the MCU's back on track, but I'm still nervous. I will wait until the Marvels comes out in November. If that's good, then we're like, we eating, baby. We feasting. But for now, I'm still cautiously optimistic. This is a good one. It might be an outlier. Okay. Well, I want to give it a 10 out of 10. No movie is ever perfect. Like, we will always have nitpicks on movies. And I think every now and then it's time to, like, it's nice to kind of relax and go, you know what? Maybe it was a 10 out of 10. Like, it, it, it's, it is easily a high 9. But, like, setting stepping back from, like, a critical standpoint... I'm really happy to give this a 10. I Like what Xander said, the villain's just... He's a horrendous person. I don't mind villains that you can sometimes agree with or empathize with. I don't mind that. But, like, it's... For, like, a villain that in Guardians, and especially, like, the High Evolutionary, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> he's... And it's great to hate a piece of shit. <laughs> um... It is Rocket's movie, but every Guardian gets some time to shine in this movie. I didn't like how... And like Again, like Rosander said, Drax became a bit of a joke in the second one. He wasn't really used aside as just comedic talent for Mantis to bounce off. And in this, we get to see... We even get to see Mantis shine, who is usually, again, relegated to poop humor with Drax. Both of them shine so well. Nebula as well. What the fuck? Why do I suddenly care so much about Nebula? Karen What's Gillen going has on? sneakily Gillen. been giving the best performance of the MCU for like six years now. Yeah. After Guardians 1, she was like super hammy. And then Guardians 2, she comes in and is like, okay, I'm going to like do it this really well. 
And then Infinity War, she's excellent. Endgame, she's excellent. And this, she's excellent. Karen Gillan is like top, top tier. All right? We need to stop sleeping on her. And if she could sleep yeah, with... <laughs> oh, you... Yeah. Uh, uh. Sorry, that was that was poor. That was poor. I just want a cuddle. I just want a cuddle. Continue, Hamish. Sorry. No, no, you're 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 bang on, and it's it feels right. It feels right to give it a ten. It deserves the ten. It's been a while since I've like cried three times at a Marvel movie, and it's not I'm just cried in general at a Marvel movie. It's so emotionally driven this movie, and I'm I'm in love with it because of that. Easy ten. Epic. I think we're now ready to uh, give our spoiler warning. Wait, wait, wait. Can, can you hear that? Wait, wait. Is can it a bird? Hear that too? Is it a plane? No, it's the spoiler warning. I don't, I don't want no... Spoilers. Spoilers. It's gonna be seamless. Oh! It's gonna be seamless. <laughs> Right, okay, so I was doing really well in this movie. I thought it was really great. And I was like, man, this is really sad, getting towards the end. And then they why, they had to play one of my favourite songs of all time. Why did they do that? That just felt like a big middle finger to me. Why did they play Florence and the Machine? Why would they do that? Oh, why I'm not going to listen to that song the same. Why would Why would they do that to me? That's just fucking cruel. Why First would they do Gavin and Stacey, now when, this. When I say I bawled, I was like inconsolable. Like... I was trying to... It was like a... <laughs> I felt... They I could had, taste the salty tears in my mouth. I was crying that much. I'd wipe, I'd wipe my eye with my finger. It'd make, it, it'd make my eye wetter because I'd already wiped it on my sleeve. <laughs> like, I was I was soaked in tears. I was They had I was so absolutely no afterwards. right hitting us the way they hit us with this movie. My mm. God. Those it is bastards. Bastards. Yeah, fuck's sake! Like that hit me in the feels, dude. Fuck off, Ali. <laughs> Sorry. Like Lila. Oh. Can we talk about Lila? I need to talk Lila about Lila. Lila and Floor, Sweet isn't baby. it? Floor, yeah. I yeah. wasn't so ready better. for that. That was Nobody... actually possibly one of the most emotionally driven scenes in the MCU. Them just because names. No, Rocket like screaming when oh, Lila yeah. dies. Ooh, 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 ooh. I Go want on. to say something about that. Right, because I wanted to say it before coming into here. Motion capture actors, right? Like Andy Serkis, he's known for doing motion capture. He yeah. never gets his due because of that when he's one of the best fucking actors in Hollywood. Just look at anything else he's been in when it's actually him. Or even just look at him in the motion capture. I'm sorry, him as Caesar in the Planet of the Apes films, amazing. So this, now, you get... Yes, you get Vin Diesel as group, but Bradley Cooper's Rocket, not even just this film, all the trilogy, all the Marvel films, Hollywood needs to give motion capture their due because it is still fucking acting, and he did so fucking good in this. I'm... Yes, Yuan, I 100% back that. Except Bradley Cooper just does the voice. So it is a fantastic voice performance absolutely vocal performance he that he he deserves a lot of credit for it but the motion capture on set is actually done by sean gunn who's oh, uh, andy circus was in the credits for motion capture no as the coordinator oh whoops yeah but i think he coordinates everyone doesn't he like, mm. he coordinates he's, he's he's like king of mocap he is the guy he's the goat he's the goat he's the but, but yeah, yeah absolutely but, you're right Simon. you are the, you are right the vocals that bradley cooper Provided. His little voice. Oh. That scream hit in the field. Mm. Yeah, and and the scream it, back it, as well. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's exactly that scene because you have the evolutionary bend down and start going like, "Oh, are we playing the screaming game?" And oh, such a dick. And it's at that point you're like, I have absolutely no quarrel with this man having his face peeled off at the end of the movie. Absolutely no fucking quarrel. At that Do point? It. You didn't from the beginning when he was when testing he on little out? animals? No, I was, but like... No, I'm happy to watch him die, but like <laughs> excruciating torture, you know? Also, can I just add, 
that was like so Gamora has had a bit of a tone down from the comics which is saying something Gamora in the comics is a force of fucking nature she is petrifying she's scary in Guardians but like she's think like the Predator but so much worse whenever she started to peel his face off I was like yep never mind your guns read the comics no he's good like the this gets a pass. <laughs> you, you say that I thought Gamora was the weakest in this film. I thought she was oh, the no, weakest I, guardian. I, I do too. But what what time she got to shine, I appreciate. Yeah, I, I think the hmm, I think the stuff in Endgame probably affected this because James Gunn yeah. probably would have just kept mm. it as you know the family, and now he's had to go back on not only Nebula and Gamora's sisterly relationship where they they hugged that that's non-existent now. Uh, but also uh, Quill and Gamora's relationship. Yeah. Um, I don't know, kind of felt like the, a step back, but they had a beautiful her. send off to that. Yeah, like really them bright. standing at the end. Oh, I bet we were fun. I like you. You don't even begin to like comprehend that. Like, oh my god. Hmm. You okay, Xander? I hit my knee. <laughs> oh, I hit my knee. Um, Are yeah, we no, playing I'm, the crying game, Xander? It, 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 was, it was far too obvious for it to just be like, oh, yeah, he's they, they find her again, and then, oh, she falls in love with them again. It's far too obvious to do that. So I think them no. just coming to, like, a... In the end, like, you know, I'm, I'm sure the person I was was really good to you, and I'm, and I'm sorry that it's turned out this way. Like, I, I think that's really good. Um, and sort of subverts your expectations on that side. Um, and I love um, how invested in the plot Nebula is with, in terms of like Rocket being uh, for most of it. I think someone really pointed great. out. I saw on Twitter, and I like completely forgot they were together for five years during the blip when everyone else died. I completely yeah. forgot that. So that's why they're yeah. so like connected to each other. I forgot that, and that gives me a new appreciation of it. Yeah, I love their relationship. For sure. Yeah. Um, can... Speaking of Nebula, she 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 was so good in this. Mm. She was like, oh, just great. Karen Gillan came out swinging. Like she was funny, but then she she was like she had that scene where she just broke down crying. Was it after Rocket started talking Talk. over comms again? Yeah, that yeah. was great. Um, and her. It was lovely seeing her like just be really happy at the end, dancing with everyone, and really great. She's she's part of the new Guardians now, isn't she? Very much so. so. Yeah. And for That's everyone great. who didn't know who the fuck that little child was on the Guardians lineup in the post credit scene, Not a clue. that <laughs> is uh, Phi Lavelle, who is the daughter of the legendary Kree warrior Marvel, who is the original Captain Marvel. Oh, uh, she has long. taken up the. She has taken up the title of Captain Marvel and Quasar in the past. Huh. Um, listen, we're not going to see these guys again, so it doesn't really matter. Right? Um, I want to. We're I'm not going to. I, I, like, I think we might. I, it's done. I, I don't it, think we need done. to. I think it's I nice think, to just I, think that they're out there still. I think what they said is that we're not going to get this iteration again. Yeah, like yeah. J James Gunn's done. James Gunn's 100%. Well, I mean, he's got his contract with DC. Uh, I think he's going to come back for that. Okay. So, um, there is a run of Star Lord comics when he is stranded on Earth. The whole thing is that he is trying to learn how to be a human on Earth. He, like, tries to show up to, like, bank robberies with his guns to, like, stop the bank robbery, and he has his ass beat by the James police. Guns. With his James Guns. Because, of course, you can't wander about, even if it is in America, you can't wander about with big laser guns, like, flashing them about. So the idea cool. is that it is a wonderfully touching comic, because he has to be, he's made to do community service, and he helps this really old, disabled, like, supervillain, who's, like, this old um, cat burglar, like, pull off, like, one last heist, blah, blah, blah. And it's just a nice story about him learning to be human. He starts working in a shitty bar, which is run by all of Spider-Man's, like, D-list villains. 
like he's best friends with them all he like has drinks it's it's really touching i love that comic and i really hope they do it because by the sounds of it they, they're gonna have him stationed on earth full time i i could see it as a marvel presentation sort of a, akin yeah, to special. guardians holiday yeah. special not a whole film yeah yeah there's uh, either that either that or a disney plus series but no one wants that no one wants that not after uh <laughs> no, not after the most recent track run. Um, speaking of Star Lord, I know I've asked all of you, but I, I'm still really confused where Star Lord's helmet was. Oh yeah, well, it basically it got destroyed in the second film, but they brought it back in. Infinity wasn't it in the World. holiday? Wasn't it in the holiday special? Oh, I don't remember. I don't think so. It was definitely oh, well. in Infinity War. I think it's Endgame. one of those like bring you know like Endgame kind of ruined some things for him for Guardians. I think it got, I th- from what I remember, it got destroyed in the second one. It and did, yeah, it gets destroyed to... in the second one, and uh, from what I've it, it, it seems really obvious that it was meant to stay that way. Yeah, so and I think it just kind of like... And then, they, and then they brought it back in the Infinity War just because, like, oh yeah, that's, that's what the character looks like. Um, so they, they kind of had to, you know... I am something. a big advocate for that helmet. I adore that helmet. I have the helmet in real life. Um, <laughs> it's a cool helmet. We'll just include the VFX of it just pouring onto my face now. Um, but no, actually, it is uh, it is a fucking awesomely designed helmet, and I am a big sucker for it. So I was a little sad not to see it, especially in the send-off of the Guardians. Did, yeah. did, it, did anyone else make the connection that um, them getting the orb from that place yeah. was sort of the, like the orb from Guardians 1? Yeah. Ooh, Ooh la la. I've connected Ooh, dots. Nah. Oh my god, yeah. Connected shit. Yeah. I thought that was a neat it, little reference. Th- there's a lot of parallels, a lot of callbacks to it. Mm. And, and we also get like a load of... like This de- genuinely feels like they're wrapping up everything you have the return of the shop guy from the first film on yeah. Xandar. Oh, oh here we go. You have here how- we oh, go. No, 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 I don't, I'm not going to mention that. You have How the Duck again. <laughs> you, you have Yondu for one last time, which was great. Yeah. Just a nice little cameo. Love that. Yeah. Is it a James Gunn movie without Michael Rooker showing? Or oh, Nathan Fillion. Or oh, Nathan Fillion. Yeah. Nathan Fillion! Ah, I love, and, I and love that see, man! And his, his wife's in it from Peacemaker. Yeah, yeah. I, I, find that, I find it funny that he James Gunn has gone on Twitter because someone said, why do you keep casting your wife in films? And he's like, I don't do that. And she's in this one. No, but like, also like, who gives a shit? <laughs> like, oh no, I don't give a shit. I think it's great. You know what but... I mean? That that role wasn't even probably wasn't even a thing before he cast her, and then was like, "Yeah, just just do this." It's like, yeah, of course you would. Like, fucking who else is it? Someone someone put on Twitter saying like Sam Raimi has Bruce Campbell in every single one of his movies, and no yeah. one has a go at that. It's almost like they're friends. Wow. Yeah, and he's got um. Ratcatch 2's in this as well. She's the pink mm-hmm. lady that um, Star Lord tries to flirt with. Oh my god, she. Wait, what? Did you know that? Did no. You, know that? you didn't realize that. No. Yeah. I'm not okay. What? There was, no. There was also, King Shark. Adrian! No. Uh, no. We did this last week, it's fine. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Call so every week now, we have to make an impression of Celeste Sloan. And we have to talk about oh, what, what's Jesus the other word? What's the big Christ. word? Hybridization. No. Oh, oh no! Do not do else. that. Do not Hybridization. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> what word did you think I was going to say? <laughs> um, <laughs> the one Joe said. It ends in bind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that, that one. Um, oh yeah, we also had the introduction of a character. I had to that, look this up. What? I didn't know the name of them, but we had the introduction of Lambshank. Isn't that a meal? <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about the little guy that Mantis lets out. Oh, oh the ugly guy! Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, I... Joe. Yeah, <laughs> like Lam- that? yeah. I've got a picture cool. of Lamshank here. He was cool. For the for for those who need more specification, Lamshank is the little ugly thing fuck. of flesh with legs. Isn't that uh, a real well, one? No, no, I'm not Lamshank. <laughs> he's he's maybe Joe is. 
Ah, oh, whoa. It looks nightmarish. Like, exactly. thank you. Thank you. Can you put Lamb Shank in the poster for this week? I can put Lamb Shank as just the star of the poster. I need to make a start on the poster. There he is. He's busy. in Joe's posters. Go look. Jesus. There he what is. What a beautiful in all of his little glory. guy. Listen, he's beautiful. He's kind of, he looks like a meatball. Um, if you want to see what no, this guy looks not. like, check out the poster for the episode this week. It'll be on our Instagram and our Facebook. Yeah, yeah Lamb Shank will Joe, be Joe, you have there. to put him on the now. Oh. Isn't it technically oh. a spoiler, though? No. Because he's not in any not promotional really. material. Yeah, but he doesn't change the film, does he? Yeah, I would. I would have been angry if I saw <laughs> Lamb Shank on mine. <laughs> um, no, um, should, film... we, should we talk about Adam Warlock? Yes, yeah. we should. We'll Will Poulter. Yes. Will Poulter. Will Poulter. Mama, the, mother, mummy. I. I don't think he was that bad. No. No, I liked him. I thought he was funny. Um, and they, they they said he was a child, so how he acts is, you know, completely, you know, fine. Yeah. And and they do the whole um, Adam painting thing with Star-Lord at the end. Creation yeah. Adam. That was great. But yeah, I, I, did you really need him in this film? No. I, okay, I think they set up at the end of Guardians 2, they set up Adam. And there were talks of him being, like, the big fucking bad of the new movie. And I wouldn't be surprised if at one point he was the big bad of that script. Yeah. But whatever way the rewrites happened, James Gunn swung it a different way. And I'm alright with his role in this movie being the role that it is. I think could have maybe done with a little bit more. But I enjoyed him. He was fine. He was absolutely fine. Like, <laughs> like I, I think he was. I mean, he was good. Like, but the, but the character didn't have like much to do. Mm. I guess, but I like that he sort of learned his lesson at the end. Of, you know, it was yeah. Quite and now nice. he's part of the guys, isn't he? Yeah, he's part of the Guardians, which yeah. makes which makes sense. Isn't wasn't he the whole like? Isn't that his whole thing in the comics? Like he's one of them. Um, he's sometimes a guardian, sometimes he's a villain. Most of the time, he has an Infinity Stone in his head. We, but they did have vision. they did put a little plastic gem in his head, which is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> another thing, Infinity War brewing. Um, <laughs> this yeah, this no. film, this film had the first f bomb. I think was it the first. I F-bomb? loved it. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a I, wonderful. I, I, it was yeah, perfectly I, placed. I, I saw the clip online beforehand, and I was like, "This is really funny," but oh, nothing. What? They posted honestly, it? yeah, nothing yeah. will. Um, like, I didn't but see it bleeped it. out. It bleeped out the swear. So, but nothing will is more satisfying than seeing a clip of just someone just say "fuck" on it, like in a in a in a twelve movie. I love it so much. I I had no idea where it was, but I heard that there was one in it. It's so perfectly that. placed, too. It is. It doesn't I mean, feel they've... like it's, oh, you're just putting there for the sake of it. She's literally just trying to open a fucking car. <laughs> yeah. And like, she can't. It's, um, it, it's one of those ones as well, like, we're going to get Deadpool. I feel like this is a really great way of saying to people, oh, look, we can swear in these. We just haven't. We can oh, be naughty. <laughs> we just haven't until now. And so then when Deadpool comes out, it's not like, well, at least the first swear words. Like we've had one now, so it's like. Mm. Also, the gore, I liked the gore of it. No, 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 like that was Fall Love and Thunder. Shut want. up! Uh, Knew you were gonna say that. I feel but like, no, like some that... critics. Sorry. I feel like he said that a few times this week already, hasn't he? Uh, you are mistaken. He has. Yep. Yes. He has. But like some critics were like, oh, you know, they're they're they're, they're trying to be. They, I don't know, but I think they were being pissy about it. Oh, it's supposed to be comedy, then you add a darker tone to it. This film needed the darker tone, but I think the gore of like uh, the high evolutionary's face. I don't think it was misplaced. I think it was needed. I it thought was, it I think was the best. It disgusting. was brilliant. Yeah. And it's what he fucking that. deserved. Um. Can can we can we quickly talk about the music? Um, I'll, yes, I'll be sure. quick. I'll we be can quick. talk I'll be about quick. the music. Wait, the so, music or the soundtrack? The 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 score. 
So the first two films were done by Tyler Bates, who did a pretty good job. This film and The Guardians Holiday Special was by John Murphy, who did The Suicide Squad. So it's a bit different. And the Guardians theme isn't in it as much. Like no, the first time I, I, I mentioned that I, to you earlier. It was well. properly heard. Is first okay. time it was properly heard. I think is when Rocket crashes into the spaceship. Um, saying that, I, I don't think the score was as good, but there are some pretty good tracks in it. Like the track when Rocket fi- sees the word raccoon. That's great. Oh um, no, that that's hit me hard. The final, the, the final track when they're all standing up and saying goodbye is the same track that plays in Guardians One, but different version of when they're all standing up and bunch of jackasses you know, standing up. Yeah, so, that, so there's that connected map. Um, so yeah, as, although it wasn't the same composer, I, I think he did a pretty good job. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that was music nice. corner with Joe Cook. Um, the soundtrack as well, like the the um, the licensed music you know it's really good again shock mm-hmm. um i really like that rainbow song since you've been gone i've known it yes. since i was a little kid so now here oh, people yes. know it and be like wow this song's really good i'm like yes i know it is um and that that Can... song they used in the first trailer um uh... like, that's really cool you need to be more specific xander yeah me home, I don't know the words. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it goes like. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, oh the yeah. In the Among Us spacesuits. Yes, the Among Us theme. Yeah. Yeah. Among Us, Among Us the, theme. The the Among, Among Us. the Among Us theme. Ding, yes. Ding 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 ding. Did it? What? I thought you were saying ding, 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 and you were doing an impression of the, the guy from Breaking Bad. Ding, 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 But, uh... <laughs> but, uh... And dog days. Spe- yeah, speaking of that end, yeah. can we discuss Groot saying I love you guys? Oh, that really got me. Tears, 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 tears. Yeah, why, tears. Do, why does he say that? Why, why does he say that? Because. Shut up, Xander. Because he loves them, Xander. Why has he been a dick for? Why has he been a dick for, though? Love is a universal language. Why why didn't he say that sooner? If he could say other words, why didn't he fucking say it sooner? You know, like, when we're we're all, like, dying. He has been saying it. Why should he, you know? He's He's learned. He's been saying it. You just can't understand Groot, you uncultured fuck. Xander, some people show love through different ways of not saying I love you. Like you to your parents. Oh, my God. God. Sorry. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry. Ah, oh. oh, he's gone. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've been destroyed. I'm um, so sorry. Oh wait, oh, shit. Who was that aimed at? I thought that was aimed at me. Was that aimed at Joe? All right, yeah, chill it. Joe gets no love and no bitches. I'm sorry, Joe. <laughs> Moving on from that, um, Groot was great in this film. Like he had so many great moments. You had the the big scary Groot when they Kaiju got to Groot. Groot. Yeah, when it got to counter. <laughs> That's a great. Uh, <laughs> you had Groot without a body, almost like the thing. Uh, the head or crab. Um, Groot with weapons. That was cool. I didn't because I didn't watch any trailers. Or I watched the first one, and that was when it came out. So I didn't know anything about this film. So when they when Groot took out the weapons out of his body and started shooting, that was great. And then you had flying group with the wings and the big group mm-hmm. at the end. There was lots of group content and it was good. Lots Groot. of gro- lots of good group content for sure. Yeah, Collection lots of, of Groot content. No, that that failed. Um, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, um, yeah, I'm is, not is, sure is, what else there is. I mentioned Drax yes, earlier. Say, is, Drax. Is that all we've got? I, I've, I've yeah. got a few things. Go for it, Joe. Um, no one died in the film. But it it That's doesn't it, yeah it's the sort of film where you're like I didn't need anyone to die because it was so emotionally charged as it was um, and w- w- we had Lila um, wheels and oh wheel, who's wheels, wheels. <laughs> <laughs> That's just offensive, Joe. Just because he's no, I didn't that. no, we had Lila, teeth, teeth and floor. floor. They died, which is a fucking shame. How dare they kill them? So that was sad. Also, Star Lord sort of dying in the vacuum of space. I was that needed? 
No. I think I think it was. Because I was like, if because... this is his death, that is really goofy that they've just bloated his face well, yeah. out. Well, <sighs> no, I, I I think the meme was that everyone was like, a Guardian's going to die. Dave Bautista's contract's up. He hasn't signed a new one. Oh, we all know this James Gunn's last big outing. People are going to die. They beat us with Rocket dying. He doesn't die. They beat us with Quill dying. He doesn't die. It is the biggest double bluff, and I'm here for it. I, I just think, like, it wasn't needed. It doesn't ruin the film for me. You know, I still gave it a nine, but... I, I, like, I, don't how, know. I like how... Like, Emotionally, when... it did things to me. Yes, but when Rocket's talking to Lila when he's, like, about to die, it kind of just looks like Harry Potter. I thought they're that like... too! There was going to be, like, like, a little it's... Voldemort yeah. in the corner. Little <laughs> little Rocket in the corner. It just reminded me of that, just because it's white. <laughs> I know that's... But, yeah. Um, I, I got slightly taken out. I got slightly taken out of the film when I saw the life-size panda on Counter Earth. I was like, <laughs> okay, what's going on now? <laughs> but yeah. that that was fine. Um, I'm surprised none of you have brought up the hallway fight, which was a whole. I two was waiting minutes. for you to finish Ooh, your that's list. True. Sorry, that was a whole two minute. I think that was actually unbroken as well. Like Step I couldn't aside, see any cuts. Daredevil. It wasn't unbroken. There's too much CGI in it to be unbroken. Um, mm, but like, there'll be there'll be loads of hidden cuts in it, and I think I spotted one towards the end. But yeah, still, I think I did very, too. very impressive, very impressive. Yeah. I mean, scene. every character got their limelight in it as well. Yeah, and yeah, especially with the killing of fucking well, not the killing, but the defacing of the High Evolutionary. They slapped the bitch out of him, and they everyone got the bitch out of him. everyone got a little bit piece. Um, just quick side detour. Um, back to Hamish as a gigantic virgin because he reads comics. For those who didn't know, the High Evolutionary's appearance is a big thing for mutants in Marvel. Um, in the comics, he has sometimes been credited to the creation of the X-Gene, or the influence towards the X-Gene, um, but in most recent comics as well, uh, it has been revealed that Wanda and Pietro uh, the Maximoff twins, are not actually mutants and are instead experiments of the High Evolutionary. Oh, anyway, back to it. Sadistic. <laughs> um, bring, it, if, bring, if, in, bring in that quote up out of nowhere, you sadistic fuck. I have, um, I have a way back to, to end it. the spoiler section. Okay. Um, so... This, this is going to get cheesy, guys. You're going to get cheesy. Maximum cheese. I'm going to turn my camera off while I do it as well. Um, but this, the film sort speech, of... Speech. 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 <laughs> the film sort of ends with these characters that are like a family going their separate ways. And that's kind of happening to us right now with the end of oh, uni. Oh, Jesus! And stuff. And it, it just made me really emotional watching it. I think that was why I cried so much as well. Because I was like, I, oh, we're all going to be saying yeah! goodbye to each other and... I, I don't want that to happen. Um, because as Groot that says... That is fucking horrendous. That is fucking horrendous. How you dare you do this to me? Um, we Joe! Look I'm sorry, um, but... I've, I've um, never felt like so much of a third wheel in my life. I'm going to uh, put the dog down to you as well, Xander. Bro, I'm still I'm, fucking I'm... here. What are you? I'm not going in. <laughs> Who would you be? <laughs> If anything, I'm I trying just, to move closer to you. <laughs> I've just put dog days on my Spotify. <laughs> as you uh, said. It's, it's a ve- it was a very emotionally charged moment. Especially as yeah. this was the first... Guardians 1 was the first Marvel film I saw in cinemas. And it, it sort of, it's sort of weird that the, the end of the trilogy and the end of these characters coincides with us saying goodbye to each other. Um, so, I, I just thought I should... I, I don't know. I ha- I've had that playing on my mind ever since we got out the cinema. I was like, "This is this is this is too much." Why must you do this to me, Joe? Why, Joe? Why? But yeah, the film was pretty good. Make it- <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. If you've just come back and you've skipped our spoiler section, how dare you? Welcome. We are at our. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? How dare we you? <laughs> we are at the final and last bit of our podcast which is sell me your movie or if you're a nerd you can sell us a book or a game or a piece of music it's up to you joe oh, what do you me. have to sell us oh okay yeah um, it is you sorry bud <laughs> well i'd like to recommend no 
Um, I'm gonna. <laughs> it's sort of an anti recommendation. Um, oh, we love those. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I don't know if it was last week, but a little film came out called Peter Pan and Wendy, and as fine as it is, it's mediocrity at its you know its quintessential mediocrity. Um, there's no hook to it at all. <laughs> <laughs> the worst bit, you know it's you know it's bad when the worst bit about that film is peter pan we were rooting for hook hook, hook was great oh, that's a shark um, wow. so, hook in you, that film is the best bit are you trying to tell me that a disney live action remake that went straight to disney plus is bad wow oh, yeah, what? yeah yeah um call me surprised no. Don't, don't give it your time. I mean, go watch the original. Watch the 2003 one? Was that Three. One? Watch that one because it's good. And this one is not. Hmm. Swan. Um, I technically haven't actually watched much this week. Um, <sighs> so I'm going to go with the fact that it was May the 4th two days ago. It was. And watch At time Star of recording. Wars. Yeah, yeah. It's the 6th today. So, you know, if you're a weirdo that hasn't watched Star Wars, or even if you don't want to watch Star Wars, I don't care. Watch Star Wars. Star, Star Wars is real good. Star Wars is real good. Um, I hate telling yeah. people cool. that I like it, but, like, orig- like okay. Star Wars, for, like, original Star Wars and Empire are, like, two of the greatest films ever made. Like, it's, it's just insane how those things got made. So, like, they deserve your time. Oh, those two specifically. If you want to get more into it, do... But, like, just watch Star Wars. It's a perfect movie. Revenge of the Sith is the best one. And Solo is pretty damn good film. Solo is pretty good. I have not watched Solo since I tried to drunk watch it. With Well, no, it wasn't meant to be a drunk watch. You guys showed up to the watch drunk <laughs> on Discord. You, you, Xander, Joe, and my own partner, Alex, who's also on this podcast, never mind, the three of you showed up drunk... And I left halfway through because you wouldn't shut up. If I'm drunk, I'm not going to stay quiet, Hamish. It's a good it's the movie. Way it yeah, works. I know. You can't shut me movie. up when I'm drunk. It's a good movie. Um, my recommendations on the same vein as the ones. I have Star chosen Trek? to do a no. It's not soundtrack. <laughs> no Star Trek. <laughs> um, oh no, it's for May the Fourth. Oh. Um, there is a brilliant comic book series called The Crimson Empire, which is now long no longer canon, unfortunately. Um, but it takes place after the fall of the Empire, and it follows uh, one of the surviving Emperor's Royal Guard, who defects to the Rebel faction. And you get to learn so much more about these really cool guys. Like, they are terrifying. Like, there's a panel when like he shoots a TIE fighter pilot whilst the pilot is, like, flying through the air. He shoots it through the fucking window. Um, the sick stuff. Anyway, Xander, your recommendation. Um... I'll give you guys an option. I have two potential ones. Um, give us both. Do you want? You want both? I'm gonna go for it. Give you me can the, edit it. Give me the double down. Want. Which one do we recommend? Give me the to? double down. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll give you my um. It is it's an older movie. It is from 2011. I watched a film called Grave Encounters. How is 2011 old? It's 12. I years know ago. this. That's not um, old. That's 12 years ago. That's an that's an it's old. It's not channel. old. It's an old anyway. It's an old child. Well, well, my other recommendation <laughs> is from two weeks ago. So, <laughs> what, what, what's new? What's old? Fuck you, Suwan. Go oh, away. Sixties. Like <laughs> anyway, I was thinking you were going to say Twelve um, Angry Men, to be honest. But hey, um, <laughs> Grave Encounters. It is a found footage horror movie, and it is sort of a riff on. Um, like most haunted, you know, like these fake reality TV shows where they try and track ghosts. And it starts off like mm-hmm. these guys go into this house, this asylum, where it's like, oh yeah, they're, um, you know, we're, we're here with this TV show. And then things start getting a bit too real. Um, I think it's really fun. Um, have you have you seen the second? I have not seen the second. It It's cracking. Um, I think I, the second one is going to be I our, our, our watch this week as a house. I, I love I love both of those movies. Yeah, the the first one, having seen it, it's it's really fun. Um, I like the idea of just like you know these most haunted things being like so obviously set up and then going from there. Um, and it's sort of 
take taking the piss out of that. That's really good. Um, and the main guy in it is he's really good as well. He plays that role really well. Um, so yeah, it's on Amazon. Go and check it out. The second movie. It came out a few weeks ago. And there was a one-off screening of it at my local cinema. Because um, I don't know when it's like properly getting released here. It's been like limited release. It's Brandon Cronenberg's new movie. It is called Infinity Pool. Oh! Anyone? I've not seen that. <sighs> Sick. Um, it is starring Alexander Skarsgård and Mia Goth. Uh, who I think I might now be in love with a little bit, just a little bit. She terrifies bit. me from watching uh, Pearl. Yeah, she's sick. She's so good. Um, I watched Pearl the other week. It's so fucking good. Pearl's really good. Sorry, continue. Uh, so this is about a couple who go on a vacation to this Eastern European sit- uh, country where it's like, the police are really corrupt and it's crime-ridden. And if you go out of this resort, then you're kind of taking your life into your own hands. And they meet up with this other couple who are kind of like, you know, a bit mysterious, a bit, bit seductive. And they go for a bit of a joyride to a beach. And on the way home, they kill someone by running them over. And then things get a little bit fucky from there. And I will say, there are some images in this movie that I will never unsee. Should, should, we, <laughs> should I watch it? Is what... Yes. Yes. Yes, I For want to give you as little list. context as possible, but I feel like I also have to tell you that there is a very close-up shot. Oh, I don't want to know. Don't want to know. Don't want to know. Don't want to know. Joe, well, I could deafen. I could deafen. 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 There is a close-up shot in this movie of um, a large cock being wanked oh, off. And said cock. I want to see it. Then yes! said, said cock then <laughs> ejaculates, and you see the drippage of cum onto the floor. I want to see it. Yes! I want to see it. And yes! I'm telling you, when you're on the fourth row of the cinema and you're like looking back, and it's just the entire <laughs> screen, and all you see is cock and balls, you're like, okay. Did you see in 4D? No, no, I didn't see in oh. 4D. <laughs> Joe? Joe. Joe! Joe! <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I was going, oh, undefined. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a, a really weird movie that I think um, would make a really fun Joe watch. Yes. Um, mm. It's got some really great performances. Mm. Mia Goth is excellent as always. And she I'm plays a, a really weird person really well. So um, yeah, check it out. It's, it's, it's real good time. If you're into that well, of thing. oh, if you're <laughs> well, I think that's I think that's about it. Where where can the amazing people find you, Joseph Cook? You can find me on Twitter at Cook Eleven Eleven Joseph. I I recently just posted about how I hate the monarchy, so check that out. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, Joe Cook underscore Digital Artist, and then you can find me on YouTube at Rebel Hoovian. And now that uni's finished, you'll be seeing me on those. Uh, a lot more frequently. Woo! Xander, where can the beautiful people find you? Uh, you can find me on the um, official Film Me In Pod Instagram and Facebook. And those posters are done every single week by Joe Cook. Thank you very much, Joe. You're amazing. Need to get started on it. Beautiful. You're so talented. Um, expect a really good one this week. No pressure, Joe, but I'm already saying it. It's going to be sick this I've got, week. I've got like a day to do it. <laughs> I've like a day to do it. It's going to be so good. Um, and yeah, just about as well. I, do, I, I get about. Swan, where can the amazing people who are listening and liking us on Spotify, Amazon Music, and Apple Music find you? Um, as I usually say, I'm on Twitter, but I don't tweet, and I'm on Instagram, and I don't post much. Um, but it's at Siwana Wine, and if you want to see my oh so funny letterbox reviews, I'm on Letterbox as Siwan O's. Do you post your artwork anywhere, Siwan? You cock. Well, no, it's good yeah. artwork. It's good artwork. I do, but it's anonymous somewhere okay, where okay, you'll I'll never win. find. Oh, you're oh right. you're look at me, Madam Mystery! Uh, you can also mystery. you can also check us out on Twitter, like Swan said. We do have a Twitter account uh, and the official filming part. Do we post so, on that account? Um, we do. <laughs> do we? Um, to my knowledge, I hope we do. 
Um, Xander. Feel free to tweet us and we'll post. Maybe, okay. we'll, 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 yeah. we'll, 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 we'll reply if you tweet at us. Um, Please do. And you can find me on Instagram and at Twitter. Uh, uh, Beaten Hamish, which is my Twitter. And H- Hamish2864. What's the 2864 uh, for? I don't know. It's a random set of numbers that I can remember. This is pin code. No, he, he said um, 2864. It's actually my kill count. <laughs> um... <laughs> 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 uh, the Xander is now dead. <laughs> anyway, you're now. next. <laughs> um, anyway, um, if, if if that's all said and done, yeah, it is. Thank you very much for tuning in. Yeah. Bye bye. Oh, yeah, uh, ne- ne- next week. A feeling. Next week Sorry. we're doing um, Marvel <laughs> tournament again. Oh, and yeah. unfortunately, Ooh. Guardians Three will not be involved in that. So. Oh. Mm. We could bring it and just put it in. Can it be an honourable mention? <laughs> it can be an honourable mention. We're too far gone. We're too far gone, okay? It's an honourable mention. But it's Guardians 3. Guardians Bye, everyone. Three good. Bye bye! What the hell was that? What was that? Yeah, Hamish, I'm really weird. <laughs> it's like a robot. <laughs> I said bye bye. <laughs> you went, it like a robot. <laughs> oh. Bye bye! Bye! Her rumps. You're not saying bye, Joe. Goodbye. I mean, it's, it, we have to do it every episode. We have to include the word her But yes, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Her rumps. Her rumps.